My name is Dr. Winston Cray. I have been here since the beginning. My life's work has been to untangle the mysteries buried within the DNA of man and the others. To fulfill a pact and in turn become the linchpin for a new world order. Circumstances have changed. I have sacrificed my very life to reveal these secrets. The experiments I have conducted over the years have taken their toll on my mortal coil. Science has at last failed me, as I am unable to heal my body. But my mind is still active, and it shall serve me to the end. I have done what I have done, so my work will not be in vain. It shall live through the ages, and I shall be remembered through it. But I take credit for only what I have achieved here, deep in the bowels of this institution. The work was vast. The moon landings nearly four decades ago were part of a misdirection by our government to confuse the public regarding alien encounters. We've certainly been to the moon, but the mysteries and horrors found there would never make for quaint historical quotation. Spontaneous human combustion was an ill-conceived notion pursued by a sector of the scientific community here. Their early testing on pigs made the laboratories reek of burnt bacon. The human test subjects smelt even more repugnant. I was most grateful when that line of research was abandoned. But there is an interesting side note to that experiment. The urban legend of a man drugged by strangers later waking up in a tub of ice missing his kidney or liver or whatnot. That arose from early test subject failures that were inadequately disposed of. The claims that the Bible holds a secret mathematical code that prophesied world events. That was initiated by a group of scientists who got inebriated one evening and thought it would make a good practical joke. Crop circles were another one of that crew's pranks. The after-hours entertainment here is extremely limited, and this sort of puerile behavior regrettably occurs from time to time. Remote viewing was a promising avenue of research that failed to live up to its initial potential. Harnessing psychic abilities to spy on one's enemies has a provocative lure, but test subjects were wildly erratic with their results. Those who showed more consistent abilities were, in my opinion, inadequately trained, and the program was eventually discontinued. As for my own work, it has always been the primary focus of Area 51, and these other diversions black helicopters, cow mutilations, and the like, have been the pastime of those unable to grasp the importance of my research. Bioweapon engineering requires finesse to manipulate both the pathogen and the population in a way that accomplishes the desired effect. It necessitates extensive lab work, followed by a series of controlled study groups. One such example of a localized control group was the 1976 experiment in a Philadelphia hotel. We were able to successfully introduce the pathogen, which became commonly known as Legionnaire's disease. It became the model for more complex experiments released into larger population groups, such as HIV and the SARS virus. Ebola has been the most virulent of our population-tested experiments and the most difficult one to keep in check. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as the World Health Organization, act as our preliminary survey team, gathering statistics and data of the virulence of the pathogens we have released. They also monitor established outbreak parameters, so the pathogens remain under our direction. 
These organizations were exceedingly useful in the mid-90s when the loss of several test rats who migrated into New Mexico and Arizona created a scare of hunter virus. They were able to capture the rats and return them to us while downplaying to the general public the immediate threat. The end result of these controlled experiments was to be the resurgence of bubonic plague and smallpox to create a pandemic, allowing the government to control the surviving population with considerable ease. But these experiments with earthly viruses ran concurrent with my long-term research into alien pathogens. The difficulty of unlocking the alien mitochondria was a continual disappointment to me until May 17th. 2002. It was on that day that I discovered it replicates through binary fission with an accelerated incubation period. I realized that if I attenuated the incubation period, I would be able to control the growth of the mutagens. Since then, I've been able to easily manipulate the alien DNA and hybridize it with human DNA. These experiments have given rise to my greatest innovation, a living, breathing, unstoppable organism I call the infection carrier. Others refer to it simply as the weapon. I will not allow others to desecrate my work with a myopic agenda. I will stop them with the weapon that they conspire to use against me. The world will not forget Dr. Winston Gray.